Let's sit down and have a cup of tea. <laughs> You're pouring that, are we? Yeah. Why not? I'm brooding up, mate. Mm, it's a bit weak, like, isn't it? A bit, bit like me. <laughs> right, Donkey. Spent, I think, roughly seven years together as players. You came through as a young pup, let's say. What were your first impressions when you, came, when you stepped into that first team? Everyone made me welcome. Obviously, I was a little, little scrawny kid back then. And yeah. I've changed a lot. And yeah, obviously, I was nervous at first. But then you boys helped me settle in. So I can remember what used to happen every morning. Can you? <laughs> I'm not going to. You can, you can tell everyone if you want. So you were a bit tired in the mornings, let's say. Typical <laughs> teenager. Yeah, typical. And we, Gus Poy in charge. And he felt as though you needed woken up in the morning. So you used to create a tunnel. A friendly tunnel that you, that you used to have come through every morning and we used to have you a little tap just to wake you up so you were ready and awake and alive for training, didn't you? And then we? it worked, didn't it? When I was it there. Did. Yeah, and look, and look what happened. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't say it happened now, though. No, nah, definitely not. I don't think we'll get away with that now. So you are the only ever-present player to see the incredible rise of Brighton over Albion. Mm -hmm. How's it been not only seeing those changes, but spearheading them? Yeah, it's been enjoyable and crazy, to be fair. When I first... Obviously, started training university, sharing a gym with, with students, <laughs> worrying about if you, your fingers are going to be missing when you get out training. <laughs> so now having the training ground we're at and the stadium is just incredible. I've been on another side of it where I was on the marches to get the Amex down the seafront. Yeah. So yeah, I've been on all sides of the journey and the journey that's has paid off and is showing now what we're doing. It must be really special now to, to captain the football club and lead them out in what is the best league in the world. Yeah, it's a, it's a proud moment every time I lead the, lead the side out. Um, to be my hometown team, to be from here and to walk the boys out. So just talk to me about the city that the club represents. I've obviously moved here, I've settled here. Mm -hmm. This is where I call my home now. You grew up here. I mean, what a place to grow up. It's amazing. It's diverse. It's got, it's got everything here. You've got the sunny, sunny seaside there. Look. <laughs> it's a great city. Um, I'm fortunate to grow up up here. Is there any special places that you think of or, or even for visiting the supporters anywhere you recommend? In the summer, down here on the, on the beach, in the, in the bars, the pubs, for the visiting fans, you can't, you can't, you can't beat it. From 1997 to 2011, uh, where the club probably floated, it played its home games away at Gillingham. That sounds crazy, doesn't yeah. it now? And obviously it was at the makeshift with Dean Stadium with the running track around it. So the way I see it is that the club lost a, a huge chunk of local young fans and that was obviously during the time that you mm -hmm. grew up. Would you class yourself as part of that so-called lost generation? Yeah, definitely. I think, like, I think you can put it better than you put it there. There was no fans in my school, I don't reckon, of a Brighton fan as a kid. And it shows now of that gap, that age gap of fans. And that's a big effort for, for, for yeah. people to and drive from Brighton to fans, Gillingham. Yeah. Uh, what is it, 120 mile yeah. round trip for, for a home game? Yeah, and the fans that did it were incredible yeah. to do it. And but that's probably why the club's still going, because they went there. Um, but in, now, you, now I walk down the street in town, in parks, and you see Brighton shirts. And we've now got to that that next stage of the fans coming through and it's actually it's nice to see. I think I'm right in saying you've had five managers over three leagues, anyone that you really looked up to or, or felt as though benefited your career? I think all of them on different ways. I think obviously Poye for giving me a debut, being hard on me at times and making me grow up real quick and learn learn what football's about and yeah and then you go on to Hewton and just look at what we did. You were there. We did it together and yeah, just to get us to that, that Premier League after years and years of trying. It's just I would be thankful for him being a manager at that time. I think Chris Hewitt put the foundations there for, yeah. for the Premier League, didn't he? Yeah. And I sometimes it was it was difficult for us. We were fighting at the bottom all the time, but he definitely kept us positive. Mm -hmm. uh, he never let results get on top of us. The year we didn't go get promoted against Middlesbrough and we lost to Sheffield Wednesday in the, in the playoffs. I think that's probably the best thing that happened to us. Yeah, it was horrible to last game, last game of the season to win a goes up and lose to Middlesbrough was, was hard and I'm big enough to admit I cried in my dad's arms so I wanted that to get to the Premier League. But yeah, it brought us together and we, we didn't make it in the playoffs that year but then we went away, come back and we were ready to go again. 
I just want to ask you about the biggest influence in your career from a player stroke manager point of view. I'll start with you. I think you've been, not just you sitting here, I think you were big during my career when I was a young kid. What, for the tunnel? Yeah, I think, <laughs> no, you took me, under, took me under your wing and treated me hard, but that's what football was like back then. Didn't sit down on a away trip making coffees and teas and, <laughs> teas and coffees. things like that. And yeah, it just makes you learn football real quick and understand what, what it's actually about. Ten years at the Amex, standouts? Players? Memories? Promotion day. Yeah, but I mean, there's been so many. No, there's been loads like... of memories, but that's the, the pinnacle of them all together. Yeah. It's promotion day, and I don't think nothing will ever beat promotion day. And finally, I've got to get this in, because you, you used to have a go at me about it all the time. You're 30 years old now. <laughs> <laughs> you spent 20 years at the fo football club, um, and you're slowly becoming what is a rarity in the modern day game a one club man. Is it going to stay that way? Hopefully. I don't see myself moving on. I see myself retiring here and hopefully stay in the Premier League for how many years left I've got, I've got going with this club. The way I'm happy here, enjoying my football, families, friends. What more do I want? Well done, Keith. It's been a pleasure to watch you develop from a youngster to the player you've become and I look forward to watching you lead by example in the future. Thank you very much. Nice.